Tom Felton, Matthew Lewis, and Rupert Grint were just a few of the people injured on the set of Harry Potter. The crew tried to keep everyone safe, but there were a few blunders. Like one that left Daniel Ratcliffe at the bottom of a 20-foot deep tank of water. From toppling towers to badly behaved broomsticks, let's explore the series' most dangerous scenes. Devon, let's bring him down! <laughs> James and Oliver Phelps were always down to try some stunts themselves. They trained for this scene where Fred and George are blasted away from the goblet after sneaking their names in, but the professionals decided that it would be too dangerous to hook the actors up to wires and yank them away from the goblet. They had stunt performers do it instead, and they were right. It was way too dangerous, and one of the doubles ended up dislocating his shoulder. Ready, Fred? Ready, George. Bottoms up. For most of the movies, Daniel Ratcliffe's main stunt double was this talented gymnast, David Holmes. But one tricky scene in Deathly Hallows didn't go as planned, leaving Holmes seriously injured. This scene required Holmes to be yanked backwards during a controlled explosion, as Nagini attacked, but Holmes was accidentally thrown against the wall. He tragically suffered a broken neck and was left paralyzed. He's now in a wheelchair, and this scene became the most devastating moment of the entire series. It was just a rehearsal that went wrong, and unfortunately I had my, my injury. There were a lot of pyrotechnics involved in the Battle of Hogwarts, so the cast had to avoid all those flames. Most of the fire was set to a castle mock-up, which was made of timber, steel, and plastic. But when the flames went a little out of control, it caught fire for real and quickly spread to the actual Hogwarts set. The fire was put out in 40 minutes and only destroyed an exterior courtyard. So thankfully, no one was hurt. Well, I must say I'd hoped for better. <laughs> when Harry falls down the roof in this scene versus the hungry horntail, Daniel was really hanging 40 feet up in the air attached to some wires. He was dropped suddenly and slid to the ground just as planned, but it was absolutely terrifying. Daniel said he saw his life flash before his eyes as he fell to the ground, but thankfully the wires were there to catch him and he had a good laugh about it in the end. That was really, really terrifying. And I'm not afraid to admit that. That was really scary. Hermione giving Draco a taste of his own medicine was more dangerous in real life than we would have thought. Emma and Tom talked before filming about making the slap in this scene look more realistic. Slap me. She's like, no, I'm not gonna slap you. Like, Go on, slap me right now. Let's just do this, do the motions. But Tom never expected to actually get punched in the face. The punch left him with a ringing in his ears and a pretty sore head for the rest of the day. And now we all know that Emma Watson has a pretty mean right hook. I feel really bad. I'm not really sure what I was thinking. <laughs> Speaking of accidental injuries caused by cast members, who would have thought that in this scene, Helena Bonham Carter was actually hurting Matthew Lewis. Helena decided to take a cue from Bellatrix's wicked ways and taunted Neville by putting her wand right in his ear. But Matthew Lewis moved at the same time and the wand ended up perforating his eardrum. Helena felt terrible, but she didn't really know how much damage she'd done until Matthew complained of his ear bleeding three days later. I'm definitely milking every moment. For the second Triwizard task, the cast had to go underwater, but it was a lot more complicated than it sounds. They used a giant 20-foot deep tank to film the scene, and Daniel was taught some diving signals so that he could let the professionals know if he was in danger or running out of oxygen. Over the course of three weeks, he spent more than 41 hours underwater, the longest dive being 75 minutes. But at one point during filming, he got the signals messed up, and instead of telling his diving instructor he was okay, he signaled that he was drowning, causing them to rush him to the surface. It's a good thing he didn't mix the signals up when he really was running out of oxygen, or things could have gone a lot worse. This means, quick, I'm drowning, get me up to the surface. Whereas to me, that means, hey, I'm fine. Tom Felton had to brave toppling towers for this room of requirements scene. It's easy to think all of this stuff is done with CGI, but no. Tom Felton and Louis Cordes, who plays Blaise Zabini, were really at the top of the pile of furniture that was rigged to fall. They were hooked up to wires the whole time, but Tom admitted it was his scariest scene to film out of the entire series. We can definitely see why. That table falling out from underneath them is nightmare material. Smiling now, only because my feet are on the floor, yeah. This same room of requirement scene was also the first time in the series that the stunt coordinators had to put more than one person on a broom at the same time. That means they had to reinforce the back so they could do a drive-by where Daniel could pick up Tom's stunt double. 
Next, Daniel's stunt double stepped in for the most dangerous part, where the two had to actually fling themselves on the floor. No padding for a crash landing. We never realized how much falling the Harry Potter cast really had to do while filming. Stunt double Mark Maley stepped in for Daniel in this scene where Harry and Voldemort free fall from the tower. But he admits it was really terrifying to film. It was a 55 foot high jump into cardboard boxes with no wires attached. Maley was uninjured by the fall, but Rafe Fine's stunt double ended up cracking his head hard on Maley's when they landed and was sent to the hospital with a concussion. That was pretty much, sort of, I think, as close to flying you would get without actually uh, having anything else assisting you. The Whomping Willow caused its fair share of destruction, both in the movies and on set. For this scene in Prisoner of Azkaban, Emma Watson actually got swung around on an animatronic branch. Her and Daniel also had to avoid the camera as it swung towards them, acting as one of the tree's giant branches. It was all perfectly choreographed so no one was hurt, but Emma and Daniel did leave set feeling a bit dizzy. Pretty much all of the Quidditch scenes were a little dangerous, with the cast high up on broomsticks rigged to move and spin around. But there were a few moments that were more dangerous than others. For one, Rupert Grint actually got hit in the face with a quaffle while filming his scene as a keeper. But what's even more dangerous is how they'd do crash landings, by having stunt performers swing high into the air and then take off towards a landing mat. Which is uh, something they use in the circus. Daniel said filming on a broom was already pretty scary because it was so high up and a very painful place to sit. But imagine if he had to fall from a broom like his stunt double did. Mark Maley's least favorite and most dangerous scene to film was this one, where Harry falls off his broom after coming face to face with a Dementor. Mark was wrapped in wire and winched 55 feet up in the air. Then he had to swing upside down with his head towards the ground and spin as he fell to the mat below. It's one stunt he's happy never to repeat again. The Harry Potter films often use animal actors on set, which means they had to be careful to avoid any animal-related injuries. When Malfoy gets turned into a ferret, they used a real ferret. He was pretty well behaved, but Jamie Waylett, who plays Crab, had to take some precautions to keep himself from getting scratched up and injured. He wore two pairs of pants for this scene. One they put the ferret inside and a thick pair underneath to protect his legs. It was a good ferret, it was trained. Everyone remembers that moment in the very first film when the kids walk into the Great Hall for the first time. But no one would have guessed that this scene was actually dangerous. If you look up, you can see tons of floating candles. And apparently, they were all really lit and held up by wires. But that ended up causing a huge problem. The candles kept burning through the wires, and then they would fall onto the actors' heads. They were only able to get one take of the real candles before they decided things were getting too dangerous. And the rest was done with CGI. We'll leave you with a fun look at one of the stunt performers, Harry Potter superfan Nicholas Danes. Always a fan of the books, he auditioned to double as a Quidditch player and eventually got to live out his dream doing dangerous stunts like this one. Thanks for watching, and check out our channel for more magical content.